if you want to show off to your friends, this is the way to go. Today we're going to make the ultimate lamb steak. Let me show you how it's done. By now, you should have seen the video where we had the whole limb and I cut the backside off that beautiful butt, remember? Well, it's gone, and all we have left is, is this. But this is an exceptionally good part, and I got an amazing plan for what to do with it. Look at this beauty, a beautiful Dutch lamb, 23.5 kilograms minus the butt. Absolutely beautiful, delicious tasting, and we're going to make Morsen his favorite steak. What's your favorite steak? Lamb. Lamb chops. Morsen's favorite lamb chops. And basically all of Australia's favorite, la favorite steak, I guess. It's not a worldwide thing, right? It's not everyone in the world is not enduring lamb, but they should be because when it's done right, <laughs> oh, oh. Before I get too excited, we're gonna make the most awesome steak. Let me show you how we do it. First, I'm gonna take off the shoulders. Just make your first incision and follow the line. There you see the bone. That's the shoulder blade. Whoop. There it is. Luckily, we got two sides. Number two, off. Now we're going to open up the breast. We're going to cut along the breastbone. And now we can take a look inside. Now I'm going to make an incision along the longest bone in the center. I'm going to do the same on the other side and it should line up perfectly. Now we'll make the incision across the back. Now we have to cut the backbone carefully. We don't want to destroy the loin. Look at that. And this is the chop that we're going to take out. Look at our beautiful steaks. They're a little bit rough, and of course a butcher can do a better job, but hey, not bad, right, for a first try? So basically, we just invented a new kind of steak, and I, I was thinking, well, a new steak, it, it needs a name. And I was thinking, like, if we put it like this, you could call it the X steak, but it's not attached, so that doesn't make any sense. And if it comes from the Netherlands, we could call it the Van Gogh steak, but I don't know, that's like a little bit too much, I think. It's like, it's not a big thing, it's not a big deal. So I thought, we'll call it the slow-mo steak because of Morrison, his nickname, slow-mo. But Morrison said it would be also a little bit too much. So I guess we'll just let you guys figure it out because I don't know, <laughs> I'm just too hungry. I just want to eat <laughs> steaks, lamb steaks. Oh man, what a beauty. You know why I wanted to make them like this? Look, you got the loin in the middle, basically the eye of the ribeye, and then you got the cap on top, which is the best part, and then the whole belly comes with it. And that's why I hate if people have lamb chops, they, 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 they clean off the ribs. That's, don't do that, please, don't do that. We like that, we like the belly meat. We like all of it. So now I'm in charge, and that's why we get a whole lamb. Now I'm in charge, Morrison. Finally, I'm in charge. I'm making ribs, I'm making steaks, I'm designing myself. Steak designer. We're going to make an amazing marinade consisting of a bulb of garlic, three tablespoons of fresh thyme leaves, and a handful of flat leaf parsley. You might want to chop that up before you put that in the blender. Add a tablespoon of salt and half a tablespoon of ground black pepper. 100 milliliters of olive oil, and then grind it up until you have a smooth paste. Rub it onto your steaks, put it in a bag, marinate it for at least four to eight hours. I fired up our Big Joe and I set it up for direct heat. So all of this area is direct heat. But the cool thing is that the Big Joe has so much distance from the bottom all the way to the grilling surface that the heat is nice and moderate, even divided. This is perfect for grilling with lamb. Look at these beauties. Whoa. 
The grill grates aren't hot yet, so we don't get a big fat sizzle. And we're not looking for that big fat sizzle yet, because we're going to be grilling this slowly. We want the heat to come in, melt the fat. If we do a hot sear right now, we're going to have a problem because the fat won't melt and that's not good. We need it to melt. We need a little bit of action going on for a longer period of time. So we're going to close the lid right now and that way we can control the temperature. We're going to close the top vent a little bit and we're going to hit a temperature of around 140 degrees Celsius in our dome. I'm sitting here, but Morrison should be sitting here. <laughs> this is a surprise for him. I came up with the steak. I want a t-shirt. The steak designer. The steak, you are the steak designer. No, no, no. You don't have to be a butcher to be a steak designer. This is what I do in my free time. Designing steaks. <laughs> Let's get Morrison in and give him the first try. I never had a lamb chop like this. You know, I, when you go to a restaurant, they're tiny like this. Oh, if there's such a thing as lamb heaven, I want to go there. Oh, yeah. This is special. I'm getting emotional here. This is so much better than an ordinary lamb chop. <laughs> oh, and I love ordinary lamb chops. <laughs> and I know every Australian guy is going to go freaking nuts at this moment because they have their after summer and their this, this barbecue high season over there. They're going to go nuts over this lamb. You know what the thing is with lamb? It's so amazing. It's always too, too little. It's always, it, it's not enough. But when you have something like this, I can eat for, for ages. You know what, what, what you should do? If you have a giant party, grill these and then eat them all the way bare to the bone. And then you can hang them around your neck like a trophy. And the Greek, they figured this out a long, long time ago. When Hercules and Achilles were going to battle, they had in their mind that in the end of the day, they're gonna have lamb chops, so they better survive. That's how it all went down. If you want to show off to your friends, this is the way to go. If you grill this on the barbecue mm. at a party, mm. you're the king. You know what would be the worst job in the world at this moment? Editing this. Editing this. You can look at it, and you have to look at it, but you can't have it. So for you guys who don't know, we've got Jim, the editor. And Jim's sitting at home. We're trying to minimize the amount of contact that we have, of course. If you want to you know, support Jim a little bit, go to his Instagram account. At Jim van Raan. It's down below in the text, right? You yep. put it there, right? Yeah. Just just say hi. So he he's, he feels like he's well, at least he has some human contact. Yeah. Just go to his account, give him a short DM or reply to his his posts. He makes some cool uh, music. Give him some love. Well, just to know, he's not the only one there that has to watch us eat this. It's hard. I know. I understand your pain. I'm not sure how long this will take. I'll just keep on eating. In the meantime, big thank you to our patrons and our YouTube members. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, it's Michael. And keep on grilling. That's right. Ava really, really wants a piece.